Good morning. It is now winter weather in New Brunswick here in Canada. So I want to give you a quick tour of how the frost and the snow. We had about 10 centimeters of snow earlier in the week. So I want to show you that the garden outside is done. I'll give you an update on the cold frames as well. Uh, it's a struggle. Don't think it's going to happen, but I'm going to keep fighting with what I got in there growing. Um, and I'll show you here the garden, but we're going to be moving inside. Got something else to show you guys. We have a grow tent in the basement downstairs to help extend our garden season two. Forever struggling on how to grow food and be sufficient when it comes to winter here in Canada. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we like to grow outside in the summer, because of our weather being so extreme come winter, that's not always a possibility. I am definitely researching and trial and error new things to try to grow and not always have to use space in the house. Now last year, Josh purchased a grow tent, which significantly helped me with seed starting. Because uh, in another video, the end of garden season video, I did mention that everything in my garden was uh, grown from seeds. And that grow tent significantly helped with uh, germinating and growing seeds. So I'll give you a show of that as well and some future growing that's going to happen in there. I'm not going to start that today. That'll probably be a, a weekend project for next weekend. Uh, get some seedlings starting. Uh, but let me show you the sadly dead garden here. As you see, this is the zucchini plant that I had hiding up. There's a zucchini on it, but it's all mush. All mush. So end of growing for that and everything else. Now the garlic is doing okay here. I do have a few. I might have planted it a tad too early. I'm going to keep that in mind for next year. Maybe wait another week or two before I plant it. So I'm very curious where this is the first time planting it how this is going to make it through the season. All right, so that's that. This is where the beans were. One sad little bean there. They'll get decomposed into the garden. The sad pepper plants. Look though, even though we had frost, look, some kale still growing. So I'm leaving that. It looks different though. Huh, that's kind of neat. Look at that leaf. I'll get something on my phone for clearer video, but it's it's kind of neat how it's growing out. Kind of neat how the the leaf part is protruding from the leaf itself. Kind of neat. All right. Frost kills everything here in Canada. There is a pepper on this plant, but I'm just going to let it all decompose into the garden. These pepper patches too. All done. These flowers. Marigolds are all done as well. I leave them like this. So that any animals can still have a little bit of a habitat to hide in from the cold. Um, so it looks really sad in the garden nowadays. That's Canada for you. Anyway, let's move on to the cold frames. Now that I've shown you, you don't need to see everything dead in this garden. It's all frostbitten and done. Of course, there's always some weeds growing though. <laughs> Dandelions. Those friggin' dandelions. Cold hardy dandelions, I guess. <laughs> anyway, going to show you the cold frames. Not much to update you on there. Uh, just going to have a sneak peek. Nothing really growing yet. It's pretty much going to be a no more go with the cold frame. Um, if there's anything to report, because I'm still going to struggle with it, may not film it. If there's anything to report, I will update you guys for sure. But we're going to move inside to growing inside the house. Um, so stay updated for that and see what we show you. All right, let's open this up and see what it looks like inside. Not bad. Uh, about the same 
nothing really growing. I uh, just need to update my slug traps, change my slug traps. That's all I'm going to do today in this one. Because we're definitely still catching slugs. Don't know why. Don't know why the straw bale, the slugs are so attracted to it. But those uh, beer traps are still working. I'll flip it open. Reset my beer traps. Still collecting lots of slugs. There is definitely some stuff growing here. Now we did have, we did have a very, very hard frost and about 10 centimeters of snow earlier on this week. So the whole point, what are cold frames and what's the point? I guess I haven't really explained that yet. So here in Canada, it gets very cold in the winter. And I'm always looking for ways to extend my growing season. I do phenomenal in the summertime. What about the rest of the year? Be nice to try stuff to be able to grow, especially greens, especially with the price of greens these days. Be nice to be able to extend my growing season by using these cold frames. So why cold frames? What are cold frames? How do they work? Or how are they supposed to work? And why am I trying this? Why am I struggling too? Why am I struggling? I don't know. First time doing it, it's always a struggle when you're learning something. That's okay. Sometimes beginner's luck, you get things right away and you have good success in the first year. And sometimes it's like pulling out teeth. It's like pulling out teeth right now for me with these cold frames. And I don't know why. I did some educated research, of course, Google, Pinterest, whatever uh, online resource you like to do research on. And most of it said what I'm doing is pretty good. So, but the one thing I wasn't clear on, and maybe this is the issue. Do you start from seed or do you put hardier plants in here? I think that might have been the issue. I think if some of the plants were more hardy and more established before I put them in the cold frame, I think we would have had more success. Because the biggest thing I'm struggling with is getting those uh, seeds to start. So maybe if I, I'll probably try to do this again next year because you always learn every time you do something. Every year I have a garden I learn as well. Um, but there is some stuff growing, just not much. <laughs> Especially compared to the seeds that I put in. The point of cold frame is to try to protect the ground from the elements. Uh, so in this case, I, I'm, my trial is to see if straw works better or the wooden box. So if you protect the ground from the elements, make it secure it could also be another struggle could be maybe the kind of cover that we're using again if you guys have a cold frame and you are doing phenomenal with your cold frame let me know how you start it um so yeah so i do show you there is some greens growing surprisingly that have held up to the frost that we had and the snow that we had so they are slightly working you know a little bit of struggle to get them established so let me show you and the whole reason for cold frame is to just prolong your growing season. If you can protect the vegetables from the frost and the harsh winter. And now snow does work as a great insulator as well. So once we get some snow, it might help these even more. So I'll show you what's growing. So with all the struggle that I have had with these cold frames from slugs, which I'm still dealing with, I'm just going to reset the beer traps today. Two rodents getting in the wooden one. Still no sign of rodents here in the straw one. So that's kind of neat to know. Um, I'll show you that I do, I am having a little bit of success. This is the straw bale garden. For the size and the struggle, I'm going to be happy with the little success that I am ha having. So I'll show you. There is some greens in here. There's some kale. And a slug. Mm hmm So there's some kale. And more mixed greens over here.
so very minor success, but there's some. Keep crossing my fingers that that continues. Even if I only get that little bit this year, for the first year doing cold frame, I will take that. I learn from everything I do in the garden. Every year is different. Everything is new and challenging sometimes. Sometimes there's no rhyme or reason why something hasn't worked. And sometimes everything works great. Anyway, this is the straw bale. That's about all the update I have on the straw one. I'll show you an update on the wooden one here in a minute. I'm just gonna reset my beer traps because the slugs are loving this one. <laughs> all right, because there's still significant sign of slugs in this one. I got my beer traps reset or report, I'm just gonna reset them. That's a wrap on the straw one. I'll flip over and show you the wooden one update and see what's going on in there. Now, another thing you need to keep in mind, especially with this one, is the potential, actually both, but especially for this one, the potential for mold and mildew. If you start seeing mold or mildew on the grass, the earth, or even around the, the straw, a good thing to use on that is cinnamon. And also, if you can pick it off, if there's dirt that's moldy or mildewy, as of right now, this one's good. Uh, but it is something I have to keep in mind on because it doesn't have the air circulation it should. Mold and mildew can happen and build up in these. So it is something to keep in mind on and take care of when you do see it. Sometimes just a sprinkle of cinnamon will help. Uh, and sometimes you just have to take out whatever's moldy or mildewy. So far, we're good on that. So let's see what's going on in the wooden frame. I'll close this up first. All right, let's open the wooden cold frame and see what the report is. Hmm. Well, well, well. First report, the tomato I had in here, she didn't make it. She got frostbitten. <laughs> I pulled it out the other day. I forgot to record it, but it got really frostbitten. So that tomato's no longer. Didn't think it was gonna happen. Tomatoes need a lot of heat. So I didn't think that was gonna work off out in this anyway. Now the radish and the Swiss chard are still doing good in here. So just like the other one, I am going to reset my, um, reset my beer traps. And there is, again, a rodent hole. So there is a rodent hole as well. So I'm going to reset my beer traps. Um, this peppermint oil works great as a rodent. Uh, deterrent as well. So I'm going to use that. I have we have used peppermint oil in the past in our sheds uh, to keep rodents away. It seems to work. Usually, what you do is you put some on a, paper, a piece of paper towel and put it throughout your uh, oak buildings to try to prevent rodents. That worked for us last year. Advice given to us by a friend seems to work. 
So I'm gonna, it seems to be, I see the hole where it's getting in. It's right here. So I'm gonna put a bunch of oil around there. Again, it won't hurt us. It's the smell that deters them. Same with the cayenne pepper. The way that, the reason that works or supposed to work is the hotness and the smell. Rodents don't like it. So the high smell of the peppermint oil, they do not like it. So uh, it looks like one area where I did not put the cayenne pepper, just on the very edge they got in. Doesn't look like, it looks like they just came in and came out. So I think the cayenne pepper worked. I just want to try to block this hole. So it really works. They both really work together. All right, and this one, as well as the straw, does have some slugs. So I don't know why these uh, are such an attractant for slugs. Curious. Now slugs do like wet, damp areas. That's more than likely what it is, because these are very damp right now. Uh, nothing's frozen to protect them from the weather, and we've been getting lots of rain, snow, frost, so that all turns into water and wetness. So I'll go ahead and fix this up, and then I'll show you the update on the Swiss chard and the radish that's still growing. Other than that, nothing much else coming from these. So I'll just uh, reset that and go from there. So just like I just mentioned in the straw frame gardening before I closed it up, mold and mildew is something that we have to look out for when it comes to this. This wooden box starting to show a little bit of moldy mildew on the wood itself. So I'm going to sprinkle some cinnamon over that to see if that helps with that. I'll give you guys a quick little show. It's a little bit right there. That's about it though. So I think as of right now, I can stay ahead of that. And I'll show you what's growing here before I re fully reset the traps. So again, we have a little bit of radish going. and some Swiss chard. And it looks like, it's hard to see in there, but yeah, it's too hard to see. But it looks like the carrots might be starting to sprout as well. So that's a bonus, bonus. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some um, peppermint oil around the edges of this on the outside and in that new hole that I see the rodent was in and reset my beer traps. And that's an update here on the wooden one. Again, if you guys have cold frames, please let me know what you do. Learning, willing to learn, trial and error is a lot of things I do. I do a lot of trial and error when I'm learning. So that's an update on these cold frames for today. Going to move you inside for the next video. Welcome me into the grow tent that we have in our basement and the possibilities that we have with that. So thank you so much for watching and, and I hope you keep enjoying our videos. Please subscribe so you can be up on when the latest video is available. Have a great day, everybody. Well, we're outside. Let's have a little peek in on the chickens. Can't, can't see them now that they're all wrapped up. I gave them a pumpkin this morning because I have a few left in the little pumpkin patch that I planted. And uh, they love it. So let's have a look. Hi, girls. Girls doing okay? Hi, baby bird. Were you just passing? Yeah? Hi, baby bird. You dust bathing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, chickies. Oh, baby bird. So if you don't know, chickens dust bath. Uh, you can buy dust bath uh, from any feed store. Uh, poof, baby bird. Kicked up the dust on that one. You put a little bit of dust bath in there. You could put a little bit of ash in there as well. That help, helps them. <coughs> baby bird just shook. And you put a little bit of diatomaceous earth. I think I'm saying that correctly. In with their dust bath as well. And unlike you and I, we dust, we bath in water. They bath in dirt and dust. And the reason why they do that especially the diatomaceous earth, helps get any bugs off their body. Keeps their feathers nice and silky and fresh and uh, helps them a lot. 
when it comes to their body and their feathers. Now, right now, this time of year is molting season, which means I'll do a little short on it here in a few days. None of them are looking too bad right now, but molt means they lose their summer feathers and they grow nice, thick winter feathers to help them go through the winter. So I'll keep you updated on how the molt goes for these chickens. Now last year we had significantly less chickens, so it wasn't too bad. But when I cleaned the coop the other day, and there's evidence out here as well, I'll zoom in and show you. There's some, some, some are starting to lose some feathers. Perfectly natural. There is a few things, of course, that you can help them through their molt. There is a few things you can help the chickens with through their molt. Uh, for example, higher protein, and then when they're featherless and cold, wrapping the coop like I did this one will help them stay warm as well. Well, here's some evidence of molting. More feathers on the ground. Hey, you molting? Not yet? <laughs> All right, well, I'll keep you updated on how the chicken molt goes this year. Uh, last year, I only had about three chickens uh, throughout the winter because I was new to the season and didn't uh, get a lot of chickens while I was learning, just in case. Uh, we did lose a couple last year as well, so we did get a bunch more this year. Uh, we still have two of the original four that we got uh, last year, and we added to them. <laughs> so now we have a total of 14 chickens. So it's going to look like a pillow fight in here one day. Um, very soon because they're still starting to molt. Now they look pretty sad when they actually do molt, but I'll show you that. They look sad and sick, but believe me, they're not. It's a natural phenomenon that occurs to every chicken, especially chickens that are kept in a colder climate. They'll do perfectly fine throughout the molt. Just have to make sure they have access to a bit more of a higher protein food, a bit more protein grubs, uh, and make sure, of course, like the everyday essentials, they have um, their, their water as well. Now, the dust bath helps as well so that they can uh, get d dust bath in those nice new feathers or to help release the feathers that are on there. So that's chicken, kind of if you're new to chickens and you're like, ah, oh, why are they losing feathers? It's because they're molting. Perfectly natural, they're just getting ready for the colder seasons as well. Anyway, Miss Attention Hog here, Baby Bird, wants to say hello again. Uh, say hello. Yeah. Thanks for watching everybody, we'll see you next time.